Good morning. I am Mark Grace Bertogazzo. I am John Ruth Sabayan. And I am Rish Masalbo. And we are going to discuss the seasons in the Philippines. Okay, class, please stand for our prayer. Amen. Again, good morning, class. I am teacher Ara Grace Bertogazzo. And before you take your seats, can you pick up some pieces of paper under your chair? Please arrange your chairs properly and prepare yourselves for our lesson this morning. Okay, we now take our seat. But um, before anything else, allow me to check your attendance. Okay, very good, perfect attendance. Now this morning class, we are going to discuss seasons in the Philippines. But before we're going to dive into our topic, let us have a little recap first on the lessons that we had last meeting. Okay, so what are those lessons? Okay, very good. Last meeting, we have um, discussed a uh, land breeze, which is a wind that blows from the land to the sea during nighttime. What else? Okay, very good. We also discussed a uh, sea breeze, which is um, uh, the wind that blows from the sea to the land during daytime. What else? Okay, very good. We also tackled the monsoon, which refers to the seasonal winds that brings heavy rainfall to certain regions. So, what was the last one? Okay, very good. It's the IPCZ or the Intertropical Convergence Zone, which is a belt of low pressure where um, the winds from Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere converge. Okay, very good. Now, I think you're all ready to learn our new topic, which is the seasons in the Philippines. But, let us have a game first called Four Picks to One Word, and I know you're very much familiar with this game. Where I'm going to show you four pictures, and then you're going to guess, or you're going to tell me what are these pictures all about. Okay, so here's the first four pictures. So what can we observe? Of course, we have the sun, the beach, and then the kids playing outside. So this is, okay, very good. This is dry season. Next is this one. What can you observe? The rain, and the umbrella, and the kids are wearing rainbow. This is wet season. And then the last one is um, we have the flag, and then the chon, the jeepney. So this is, okay, very good. This is Philippines. And now we're going to uh, proceed to the objectives of this lesson. So at the end of this lesson, students will be able to explain how the position of the sun in the sky relates to the different seasons in the Philippines by describing the changes in sunlight and temperature. The second objective is to develop an appreciation for the natural changes that occur with each season in the Philippines by sharing personal experiences or observations related to different seasons. And then the last one is to construct sundials using paper plates to demonstrate the changes in the position of the sun and how its position and the length of the shadow change throughout the day. So next is the season. So what is season? Season is a period of the year that is usually characterized by a particular kind of weather. So have you ever wondered why seasons occur? Well, seasons occur because of um, the tilt of the earth. And this tilt um, causes the um, some parts of the earth to receive varying amounts of sunlight every year. So for further discussions, um, I will give the floor to teacher Maria Sheila Salvo. Okay, so good morning once again. I am teacher Sheila and here I will present to you a picture of the Philippine seasonal weather chart. So I will ask you what did you observe from this chart? Anyone? Okay, correct. There is no consistency in terms of the temperature and the precipitation days that the Philippine season has in every month. So we can see that it has a varying temperature in different months, right? Okay, so what is the reason behind this? It's because the Philippine climate is warm and humid year-round. It is considered to be one of the healthiest tropical climates. So why is the Philippines called a tropical country? Why, anyone? 
Yes, it's correct. It's because the Philippines is located near the equator. So it only experiences the wet and dry season unlike other countries which has four. Okay, so the first one is the wet season. So it's characterized by a pronounced rainy season with thunderstorms. So it is called the wet because it is the time when we experience a lot of rainfalls and sometimes thunderstorms. So based on the rainfall graph, we can see that during the months of June to November, we experience this season. Okay, so the next one is the dry season. So it is characterized by hot and cloudless days. So these are the times of the year that um, we experience high heat and the months that this season occur is between January and May. So the season is generally dry with occasional rain showers. So a little bit of review from the picture that I've shown you a while ago, we can see here that during June to November, the precipitation days is higher compared to December to May. So June to November is the wet season where we experience again what? What can we experience? Yes, a lot of rain falls and thunderstorms. And during December to May, what can we experience? Yes, correct. We experience hot days. Okay. So, to further discuss the reasons why this season happens in the Philippines, why do we feel the heat during the summer season or the dry season, and why do we experience a lot of rainfalls during the, the wet season, I will call teacher Bruce to explain that to you. Thank you. Okay, good morning class. I am John Sagayan, and before we are going to continue with our discussion, I would just like to ask if you can still remember the two types of season in the Philippines? Very good. It is the dry and wet season. So, did you ever wonder or ask yourself, why do this season happen in our country? Why does it not happen in other countries which has four seasons? So, I am going to explain that to you the factors affecting the seasons in the Philippines. So the first factor is the location of the Philippines. So the location of the Philippines is a little north of the equator, meaning we are closer to the equator. And that implies that we are receiving a lot more sunlight in the dry season and a lesser sunlight in the wet season. But Sadly, we cannot experience the other season that the other countries are experiencing, just like snow, autumn, spring, and winter. Yes, that is because we are closer to the equator. And that limits the season that we are experiencing in our country. Next is the prevailing winds. We have two types of prevailing winds, and this wind blows mostly from a single direction, and this can cause the season of our country. The two types of prevailing winds present in our country is the southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon. We can see on the news that the southwest monsoon, known as Habagat, is bringing in cold winds. And these cold winds can generate rain and cold season, or we can call it the wet season. So, southwest monsoon, west, the wet season. And the North is monsoon or the Amihan is bringing in more dry or warm air, causing for us to have warm season. Okay, next is the position of the sun in the sky. So the position of the sun in the sky has an effect of our season because it is mainly our source of sunlight, heat and warmth, 
and meaning more heat causing dry season and lesser heat or lesser sunlight will cause the wet season. So the position of the sun in the sky affects the season in the Philippines by influencing the amount of sunlight we see, the angle of the sun's rays, and the temperatures experienced during the different seasons. So we really cannot say that the sun has no significant effect when we are experiencing the two seasons present in our country or in the Philippines. So proceeding with that is that during the dry season, which typically happens or occurs from November to April, the sun is more positioned more directly over head. And also, the tilt of the earth has a significant cause to that. If the earth will tilt directly towards the sun, or I mean our country, the position of our country in the earth will be more direct towards the sun, then we are going to also get direct sunlight. So the relationship is proportional. So, if our country is directly facing towards the sun, we are going to experience the dry season. The increased angle of the sun's rays allow for more concentrated heating of the air surface, leading to higher temperature during this period. So, the difference will happen if the tilt of the earth and the position of the sun is away from each other. So, at first, we talked about how the sun and the earth have a proportional relationship with each other. When they are tilted directly toward each other, they have dry season. But what happens if they are tilted away from each other? Very good. They will receive lesser sunlight. Our country, the Philippines, or the earth will receive lesser sunlight, resulting to wet seasons or cold seasons. So during wet season, which is when it falls between May and October, the position of the sun in the sky is less direct. The sun's rays are more slanted, causing them, causing them to cover a larger area, resulting in less intense heating. This leads to cooler temperatures compared to dry season. So I hope you understand something. Any questions from the class? Any clarifications? So that marks the end of our discussion. Okay, class. To test your knowledge and your understanding about the topic that we have discussed, let us have a quiz. So, kindly get a one-fourth sheet of paper and then read and analyze each question and then choose the correct answer. So, are you all ready? Okay, very good. Now, let's start for the first question. And then, the second question. The third question. And the next. And then the fifth question. Okay, for the test two, um, you're going to write DS if the word or statement is suited for dry season and WS if it is suited for wet season. Okay, so please write your answers. Are you done? Okay, very good. Please pass your papers in front. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for your take-home activity, it will be a sundial one big group activity. So first, each group will receive a paper plate and a pencil, and you will mark the center of the plate and draw lines to represent the hours of the day. And throughout the day, you will periodically go outside to observe the position of the shadow cast by the pencil on your sundials. So, in addition to the recording time, also measure the wrapper and wrapper the length of the shadow. So, at the end of the day, you will analyze the data and discuss how the position and length of the shadow change throughout the day. And reflect on how this activity demonstrates the relationship between the positions of the sun, the time of the day, and the length 
of the shadow. So you will be given time to plan and prepare for this entire activity and the presentation and observations will be made on our next schedule. That's, That's it. it. We, we hope you learned something from us. Thank you very much.